for indolent uh, lymphomas and mantle cell lymphomas uh, comparing it to standard chemotherapy. Um, the title of this uh, abstract is bendamustine plus rituximab versus CHOP plus rituximab as first-line treatment in patients with indolent and mantle cell lymphomas. Updated results from the um, study group for indolent lymphomas, NHL, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, one study. This will be prevented by Dr. Matthias Rommel. I'm trying. Head of the Department of Hematology at Justice Liebig University Hospital in Gießen, uh, Germany, and chair of the study group for indolent lymphomas, or STILL, uh, and will present the study findings. Dr. Rommel. <clears throat> so thank you very much for inviting me to this press conference. I feel honored um, to show you the results on behalf of the study group, which is called STEEL, stands for the abbreviation Study Group Indolent Lymphomas, a large cooperative study group in Germany consisting of private practitioner, community-based hospitals, and academic-based hospitals. So we compared in frontline treatment for patients with indolent lymphoma histologies, which are in the vast majority patients with follicular lymphoma. Also, we included Waldenstrom's disease, marginal zone, and small lymphocytic lymphoma, and also elderly patients with a very unfavorable sub-entity, um, which is a mantle cell lymphoma. So until recently, the CHOP regimen in combination with rituximab, which is called CHOP-R, was a standard treatment approach in most countries of the world, at least in the west part, uh, west part of the world, like the States and Europe and CHOP uh, consisting of five different regimens you see here, and it is known to have some potential toxicity. In particular, cardiotoxicity could arise, neurotoxicity, hematotoxicity, and infectious complication. However, CHOP-R is a very established regimen in the treatment on lymphoma. It has its absolute place in the diffuse large B-cell lymphoma setting, but there is always an ongoing debate if you need such an aggressive regimen for the treatment of patients with indolent lymphomas. Therefore, we randomized this regimen against bendamustine rituximab, and this is just one single compound, bendamustine, in combination with rituximab. The interesting part of bendamustine is that it was developed 50 years ago in the east part of Germany behind the Iron Curtain. So that means in the former communistic part of Germany. Only after the reunification of Germany, the people in West Germany did learn about the presence of bendamustine. This was something like an unknown thing that all the East German people were treated with bendamustine. After the reunification, the West German people were a little bit skeptic to adopt a compound out of East Germany, as one can imagine. This was in these days the mood in Germany. However, with the time we learned to accept that there were coming also, of God, very good ideas out of the former east part of Germany, and the one thing was Bendermastin. So the East German colleagues continued us to convince use Bendermastin plus Rituximab. We initiated a phase two study in relapsed disease showing a 90% response rate, and this motivated us to do it a com as a comparison in frontline treatment. So these are the results. And bendamustine plus rituximab shows uh, by far a lower toxicity profile, as shown on that slide. So we see only 12% of all treatment cycles with a leukocytopenia grade 3 and 4, and this uh, leukocytopenia appeared to be much more often seen after CHOP plus rituximab. And also the growth factor support was by far less often used after BR. Only 4% of all treatment cycles were supported with GCSF as compared to 20% of all treatment cycles after CHOP in which GCSF support was needed. So clearly hematotoxicity was much more favorable with the bendamustine regimen. Non-hematological toxicity is shown here. So the very prominent difference is that not a single patient is experiencing any hair loss with bendamustine, but of course nearly all patients have a hair loss after CHOP-R. You see more neurotoxicity due to the vincristine in the CHOP regimen. 73 patients out of 253 had any grade of neurotoxicity, and only 18 patients had grade one neurotoxicity with BR. 
you see more stomatitis with chop R, and as a consequence of the higher hematotoxicity, you see more infectious complications compared to bendamustine rituximab. What we have observed more often is some kind of skin toxicity after BR, so this was seen a little bit more often than after chop R, but this was erysema or some allergic reaction of the skin and was not a dose limiting toxicity. So these are the response rates. The response rates are not the primary objective of that trial, but they are nice to know. And you see here the overall response rate were the same, 92.7 against 91.3%. But the complete response rate already looks a little bit better here in the Bender-Mustin arm with nearly 40% against 30%. But the primary objective of such a trial in indolent lymphoma is the progression-free survival. And here we see a huge difference in favor of bendamustine rituximab over the CHOP plus rituximab. And the median progression-free survival for all the histologies included in that trial was 69 months with BR compared to 31 months with CHOP-R. And this difference, of course, is highly statistically significant with a hazard ratio of 0.58. So in a summary, we can say we randomized 514 patients. BR significantly improved PFS and complete response rate compared to CHOP-R in patients with this lymphoma diseases. And BR showed a better tolerability profile compared to CHOP-R with no alopecia less hematotoxicity, less growth factor use, less infections, and less neuropathy. Therefore, we conclude BR is not only less toxic, but also more effective than the most often used frontline treatment approach, CHOP-R, and should therefore be con considered as a preferred first-line treatment for patients with these disease entities. So I thank you for your attention, and I will be available for further questions if you really would like to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rommel. It's uh, certainly remarkable to have an agent that provides superior efficacy and decreased toxicity at the same time. Certainly a number of U.S. Uh, physicians had already switched this regimen after preliminary data uh, from this trial presented at ASH in 2009, I believe, but certainly it's nice to have the final data, and certainly this should uh, likely become a new standard of care for these individuals. Um, we'll next